We're at Fields Auto Works. We're gonna check out the new Cardinal. We got Mike here with us. How you doing, guys? And we've been talking about it, what, since earlier this year? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It was towards the end of last race season. Yes, I believe this has been a four, four year project for them. It's a beautiful car, too. I can't wait to see it. You know, serious racing hardware in the garage. I never really had a chance of escaping cars, right, as an adult. Um, and then uh, a couple years ago, uh, my dad retired, and you know, we knew we wanted to build cars, but we weren't sure what. And we thought about, you know, everybody that we knew um, building pure race cars was going out of business, or they were struggling. Or, and we saw this huge demand for track cars, right? People who just want something they can go to the track, they can drive it to the track, around the track, have fun you know, put it back away in the garage when they get done with it. And, um, of course, you know, that's such a, a far cry from the specialized race cars that that we saw, you know, going out of favor, and we thought this was the right path for us. Oh, definitely. I mean, and the, the cool thing about this, what I like about it, is that, yes, like it is a track car, and it is obviously blisteringly quick. And, you know, you can take it on the road, which is a rare combination. Here's the problem with that combination that you have solved. Typically that combination ends with, yes, and it only costs a low, low price of 200 blah, 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 thousand dollars or up. For something that goes on the road, is special. I mean, you've been able to provide something that will pass a GT3 Cup car, which I've been bothering everybody about all day, because I still can't believe that exists, for 60 grand. The key thing to us was to, to start at it from the, the race car side, design-wise, and then come back. Right, mm -hmm. and so if you think about some of the the competitors that we have and where they're starting, they're starting with, you know, they've paid millions and millions of dollars to set up a production line for one type of car, uh -huh. and so you're going to carry the limitations of that base model through everything that you do, right? right? You know, if you've got a car that's got a 1,500 pound frame to it to start with, you're carrying that 1,500 pound frame through all of your models, right? So. What we're specifically doing is we, we come at it with a race car design, we soften it up to the point that it's, it's livable for the street, it's livable every day, but at the same time, we don't give up the, the core performance that our customers demand. I see right here, we have the hollowed out chassis. And so then, this is the number two, this will be the second Cardinal uh, to be made. Um, this car, as well as the first one, are, are part of our pre-production run. Uh, we're going to be doing five pre-production cars that uh, will allow us to do some testing and tuning and, and get the get everything dialed in on the design. The idea behind the car, um, in general, not just the powertrain, but the whole car, was that you, know, you should really be able to service and maintain it uh, on your own, uh, out of commonly available parts. Mm -hmm. And so uh, everything from you know the drivetrain to the suspension, the brakes, uh, anything that you might consider a wear or service item, uh, you should be able to get your hands on on your own as the customer. Between the off-the-shelf available parts and then our spare parts supply through our dealer network, uh, it will be an ex exceedingly serviceable and maintainable car. We've seen this epidemic where cars are getting so expensive. For those of us who want something purely for the fact that I mean it's a beautiful car and when it can actually perform on a track. Um, it's stuff like this that sort of really redefines how much speed is worth. Absolutely, and I think one of the things that is really critical to remember is that, you know, right now we are seeing this divergence in the car market in general where you've got a certain number, uh, I would say the majority of the market going towards the piece of technology you're gonna get in every day to get to work, back from work, around. Um, versus something that you're gonna go take to the track and enjoy driving or enjoy driving on the road. Our cars are designed such that you don't have to be Michael Schumacher to get everything out of them. You don't have to be um, you know, a, a world-class racing engineer to set the car up. Um, and so in the discussion about what it costs to go fast and all that stuff, what's really important is for us to have prioritized in our initial design the accessibility of the car to your average track enthusiast as a driver and as an engineer or mechanic. Take us through some of the main parts of this uh, of this car. Sure, yeah. absolutely. So uh, it's a two frame construction with what we call a paneled space frame uh, for the monocoque. Um, it's entirely our own design on the frame and suspension, but we use off the shelf uh, dampers, springs, bushings, uh, joints, those sorts of things. 
Um, the entire entire powertrain is also off the shelf. Um, it essentially is common with uh, the EcoBoost Mustang, um, mm -hmm. which to your point earlier, you know, you could absolutely take this to anybody who can work on one of those Mustangs and they'll be able to service the powertrain on this. Mm -hmm. um, For sure. The result of that has been that just a stock off the shelf unit, you know, slotted into a car that's designed to accept that. Mm -hmm. um, we are already seeing on just a base tune, no modifications, no changes to the motor, uh, 300 pound feet of torque at the rear wheels from 2500 RPM on and uh, 272 horsepower for everyone else. And the key is, you know, as it sits right here, it only weighs 1,700 pounds, right? right. And so there's no amount of horsepower or torque that's gonna stop you or turn you faster. This is still very much in prototype uh, form, right? So right now we've got it set up for one of our pro test drivers. Okay. Um, so we've got the full, you know, a true racing seat in it and then just a, a normal passenger seat. What will probably be next for this specific car, obviously we have it all undressed today and all this stuff, but um, the body will go back on, uh, which takes all 10 minutes with two people. It's, you know, um, the cars are designed to come apart and go back together. Of course. Um, but uh, the body will go back on it, we'll button some things up. We're doing a little more development around uh, the fuel system and then also uh, the final touch on street register type stuff is getting the wipers all sorted out. Um, but the car will go for its registration inspection and at that point we'll start doing some on-street testing. Um, we've gotten the performance to a, a point that we're very happy with. I mean, we're, we're, we're already thrilled that the, the car is showing the pace that it shows. Now we need to go explore the comfort side and make sure that uh, that side of the value we offer to the customers will be up to the same level. What do you think are your biggest challenges when it comes to converting this to a road car? Do you think it would be like suspension or, because I know we were talking a little bit with Larry and he said that uh, I think that you have to unscrew a couple of bolts, that's all it takes to, to lower the car? It's not so much that you're converting it to a street car or into a track car, or whatever. Rather, it's, you're turning, you know, the, the knobs that you need to turn are already in place. Okay. Right? And so, um, you know, one of the benefits of the suspension design for both the Cardinal and the Sports Racer is that being a pull rod type suspension, um, you can change the right height of the car on that pull rod without affecting the rest of the suspension geometry in your alignment. And so, you know, it's absolutely true that you can, you know, if, if you show up at the track, jack the car up, you know, change those pull rods on, on all four corners to drop the car further down. Um, maybe you've got a bias valve in the car to adjust your brake bias, you know, do your shock settings. You know, 10 minutes of setup time and you can absolutely make the, the you know, transition from something that's fun to drive and comfortable on the way to the track to something that's gonna be, you know, among the fastest cars at any of it. Are you going to be doing any like uh, any automatic variants, or is it just going to be strictly a manual um, transmission? So for now, um, the sports racer will carry the option of a dual clutch or a six-speed manual. Oh wow! Um, the Cardinal, for now, is being offered with just the six-speed manual. Uh, we're exploring dual clutch and other automatic transmission options, but if we, you know, if we have a customer who is, um, you know just bent on you know a dual clutch or something like that and we will have those customers um, you know we do have options for them it's just they're they're going to be more of a custom build rather than uh, a production. I really appreciate you talking with me and stuff today um, it's absolutely amazing for me to be here to to see the birth of a new car sure um, that's I've always you know to, to see in a new car, a new car company at that and I just I mean, I can't wait to see how we could be a part of or just to see um, this company progress over time and to see what uh, what ends up happening. This is super exciting stuff, so thank I you. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you so for much. being here. Two things. First, rob a bank. Right. Yeah. Well, three things. Second, oh, hide the money in Switzerland. Third, come wait, straight here. how this happened. <laughs> We're not going to say anything else. That's the story. We're sticking to it. Let me have this. Yes, what do you think? Oh my god. Oh my god, what a beautiful car. I mean, and 
still only 60 grand. I thought that they were going to start talking about how they we talked about a sleeper when that thing is ready to go and fully, fully done. so vintage like if you pull up next to somebody like a stoplight or you're we're gonna track people are gonna think you're an e-type right and it's gonna be extremely slow an opal on steroids no, it's an opal on steroids i can't wait to get behind the wheel of it coming soon yeah i mean hopefully we can uh mike can take a drive in it and then i can either steal it or talk somebody into letting me take a drive in it right i, I believe he would let you um, i mean that, that'll be awesome so all right man we'll see you in the next one all right i will see you soon